In section 8.3, we're still going to be dealing with hypothesis testing regarding means, only now we're going to look at the situation when sigma is unknown. Okay, so that's the big difference between last section and this section. Last section, sigma was known, so we did the Z test, and we learned the two different methods for that. In this section, sigma is unknown. Now, because the 83 calculators aren't able to find that T critical value, we're not going to be able to do the traditional method for a t-test so we're just solely going to stick with the p-value method whenever we're doing a t-test okay so the p-value method steps they are the exact same as the last section that we just did uh, the only difference is where you're going to go in your calculator so instead of going to z-test we're just now going to go to t-test so let's do a few examples so example three says, a medical investigation claims that the average number of infections per week at a hospital in southwest Pennsylvania is 16.3. A random sample of 10 weeks had a mean number of 17.7 infections. The sample standard deviation is 1.8. Is there enough evidence to reject the investor's claim at a level of significance of 0.05? Assume the variable is normally distributed. Okay, so we're gonna go through those same four steps for the p-value method. So your first step is to state your hypotheses. So for H naught, we'll let mu be equal to 16.3. And then that actually is the claim. So right in the first sentence, it says a medical investigation claims uh, blah, 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 that it is 16.3. So we'll label that one as the claim. And since the null hypothesis is the claim, that just means the alternative. We want to put the opposite, so we'll put not equal to 16.3 in the alternative. Okay, step two, we want to go ahead and get the p-value. So as far as distinguishing the difference between you know last section and this section, again, last section you had to have been given the population standard deviation in order to do a z-test if you are not given that or if alternatively they give you the sample standard deviation then you're going to do a t-test hopefully that sounds familiar it's exactly what we had previously learned as far as z intervals and t intervals so same idea as before Okay, so they gave us the sample standard deviation, so that tells us to go to t-test go to in our calculator. So you'll go to stat, go over to test, and then it's just the second one down. So select that. And then uh, make sure you're on stats, and then we're just going to fill everything out. So mu naught is 16.3, x bar is 17.7. .7. S stands for the sample standard deviation, so that's 1.8 and then n is 10 and then make sure you select the not equal to mu not since that is the sign in the alternative hypothesis go to calculate and then for p-values we round to four decimal places so hopefully you also got 0 0.0362 okay once you have your p-value then in step three we're just going to compare our p-value with alpha so 0 0.0362 is definitely less than 0 0.05, so I'm going to put less than or equal to. And whenever we have that case, our decision is that we reject the null. So when p is less than or equal to alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. And then step four, we just have to make our summary statement. So we rejected the null hypothesis. The null was the claim. So therefore we say there is enough evidence to reject the claim. Okay, we'll do one more example. So example four says, according to payscale.com, the average starting salary for a nurse practitioner is 79,500. A researcher wishes to test the claim that the starting salary is less than 79500 A random sample of eight starting nurse practitioners are selected and their salaries are shown. Is there enough evidence to support the researcher's claim when alpha is 0.1? Assume the variable is normally distributed. 
All right, so we'll start with step one. So for our null hypothesis, um, let's see, the number in question is the 79,500, so we'll say mu equals that. Okay, and then we can look for what they're actually um, trying to test or what they're claiming. So it says a researcher wishes to test the claim that the starting salary is less than 79,500. So in the alternative, we'll put that mu is less than 79,500, and then we'll identify that one as the claim. Okay, step two, we want to get our p-value. So in order to figure out whether you use z-test or t-test, just ask yourself one question. Did they give you the population standard deviation? Okay, so if you read through that question, you will see that they did not give us that. So uh, sigma is unknown, or in other words, it's not given. And if that happens, then that tells you to do a t-test. Okay, so we have data, the raw data. So you wanna go ahead and put that into a list in your calculator. So if you wanna do that, just go ahead and pause this. I'm gonna kinda of continue on. So you'll go to t-test in your calculator once you put those values into a list. And then you'll highlight data, click enter and then you'll fill out the stuff that it wants. So mu naught is gonna be 79,500. For the list, if you put your stuff in L1, then just keep it as L1. If you used another one, then just tell it whatever you used. Um, frequency, remember we always just leave that as one, don't touch it. And then make sure you select the less than mu naught. And then calculate and we'll get our p-value round to four decimal places. So that's 0 0.0597. And then once you have your p-value, we just have to compare that with our level of significance. So since 0 0.0597 is less than or equal to 0.1, our decision is that we reject the null. So for step four, let's see, so we're rejecting the null. Since the claim is the alternative, that means there is enough evidence to support the claim. 